Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Midweek. Uh, as everyone was coming on, as all the, the screens were, were flooding in, I was telling uh, uh, Landon and Daryl, this, this just does not get old to me. I love seeing all of you guys. And I'm so grateful that we at least have this medium to be able to meet together and to see each other. I know it's not quite the same as being able to wrap our arms around one another. But from me to you, here's a big old hug to all of you guys uh, tonight. We are super, super happy to, to see you all and really grateful about what we're going to be uh, able to do tonight as well. As you guys know, we've ended our uh, election series, our, our midweek series uh, that we entitled Election. And, and by the way, I, I can't thank enough all the people who did join us. Uh, we had some fantastic speakers. And if you ever get a chance to see them, or if you're Facebook friends, don't hesitate just to say thank you once again for uh, what they provided to us uh, during their time here. But again, that was really great. And, uh, and now uh, tonight we have something also very special from some of our very own uh, tackle mites, or uh, I guess we're not all tackle mites, are we? Uh, but from all of our, from our, our South Sound Church of Christ family. Uh, tonight we're going to hear from our very, uh, our diversity team. Our diversity and unity, uh, unity team, they've been working very, very hard to uh, really prepare us as a church uh, to be able to respond to many of the things that we are dealing with as a country, uh, as a people, uh, to help us to navigate the complexities of all this beautiful diversity that you see on the screen. You know, one of the beautiful things about diversity is that we look around and we are, we are so different in so many ways, right? We, we look different. We have different ethnicities and races and backgrounds and ages and genders and all that is, is awesome, but it's also our diversity that can make it very difficult sometimes for us to really understand one another and to fully appreciate each other. And I think we've seen that uh, this year, uh, maybe because of COVID or along with COVID and all the other things that have gone on uh, around the country, we have seen how difficult it can sometimes be just to understand one another. But as a, as a church, you know, we want to do more than, than just exist together. We want to do more than just show up at church together on Sunday. We want to do more than just be able to see each other and smile at each other on the screen. We want to truly be a people that not only love one another, but we want to be a people that is also able to bring the love of Christ to a hurting world. And that's really our mission. That's what we want to do. And that's really part of what the diversity team is thinking about as they uh, think about strategies and recommendations that they want to make to us as a staff, they're thinking about all those things as well. So I'm really grateful for them. Uh, what I want to do right now, Daryl's going to pray for us, and then we're going to see uh, a couple of videos that our very own uh, diversity and unity team has put together. And, uh, and then after we watch those videos, uh, we'll, we'll introduce the diversity team so you know who they are, these amazing uh, brothers and sisters that serve uh, on this team. And, uh, and then after that, we'll have some time of prayer uh, tonight together as well. So with it, without any further ado, Daryl, would you please lead us in a prayer, brother? Father God, thank you so much uh, for your family. It's amazing. Thank you so much for the family of South Sound Church of Christ. God, it's so great to be together. So great to uh, show love for one another, and it's great to really focus on our relationship with you. Be with us tonight, God, as we uh, venture into more about relationships, learning about one another, and just being more unified. Thank you for the diversity team and all the things that they've done, all the things they will do. Uh, God, we, we so much appreciate are the blessings that you bestowed upon us, God. Take care of those in our ministry who are struggling uh, with illness and it's many other things, God. We have so much going on. Uh, bless us tonight. We love you. We pray our listen in your son's name. Jesus Christ, amen. Welcome to the Diversity Unity Team Introduction.
But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations, just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever increasing wickedness. So now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you are, have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Some of the topics within diversity unity uh, deal with matters of race and, and culture and and how we have unity. Some of you may feel triggered uh, because of the intertangling uh, of politics in these topics of race and culture. It's, it's true, they've been politicized. Um, but I can assure you that where we're coming from uh, does not um, does not come from a place of political allegiance to the left or to the right uh, within U.S. politics. We are aiming to tackle this from the perspective of uh, Christians, disciples who are trying to do life together uh, and be this true family of God uh, that, that we're supposed to be. You may be triggered right now and tempted to turn off this, this video, or this feed, or tune out. And I want to ask you to hang in here with us uh, as we as we talk deeper about these things. Some of you may feel triggered because you've been dealing with some of these issues for some time. I want to ask for your patience. I know you've been patient for a long time in seeing these issues addressed, but please be a little more patient with us. This video is just our introduction, just a warm up. I also want to read a scripture to center our focus on God's word and to align us to what the aim of Christ is related to unity in God's kingdom. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 10 reads, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say and that there be no divisions among you but that you may be but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought now let's hear from the diversity energy team Well, let's start with who we're not. We're not divided, divisive, unspiritual, unforgiving, unloving, impatient, nor are we judgmental, critical, prideful, divisive, hard-hearted, pathless, strangers, partisan, self-seeking, or non-followers of Christ, just to name a few. So who are we? We are striving to make the kingdom our primary identity to help our brothers and sisters do the same at a time where the world is pulling on us so much. Our goal is to speak the truth in love, empathize and understand, even when it's difficult. I believe our body represents these virtues as described in 1 Corinthians. Love is patient, love is kind, always protects, always hopes. As Jesus stated, 
the two greatest commandments is to love God and to love one another. What we do should be and is love. And more importantly, to be brothers and sisters to each other and be authentic and be that to each other and to be or uh, to become closer to each other because of God bringing us together and all our differences. This is what I believe is our true mission. It's to be unified as a church family, being able to talk openly and honestly and listen to one another, uh, seeing and acknowledging that my journey, for instance, is not the same as everyone else's and others have their own journey. Uh, we want to realize and acknowledge that our diversity should be celebrated, changing things up the way we do things, uh, worship, just different kinds of things to celebrate those um, cultures. And it was one of the things I really loved when I came to the church 30 years ago. Um, yeah, 30 years ago. <laughs> Family uh, walks together, family cries together, family feels what the others feel. Family is united um, above all things. And as disciples, we're called to be brothers and sisters, not just in word, but in our hearts as well. Awesome. Um, just want to make sure everyone knows the uh, the names, the faces there uh, for the Diversity Unity team. So there's uh, Annie Fields, um, Jimmy Lai, Kenny Maldonado, Lori McGee, Chris Ships, Casey Staley, uh, myself, Kyle Toll, and then uh, uh, also just uh, also want to mention Kim, Kim Gullickson, who uh, was part of the team early on, had to, had to take a step back, but uh, definitely uh, had some awesome contributions while she, was, while she was on the team with us. And also just give a special shout out to, to Jimmy for the uh, professional production quality of that, of that video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, that was like all his uh, hard work there and uh, we provided him with some material, but uh, he's got some, some talents that uh, he put to use there. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. We've got another part. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit deeper on uh, some of these topics, um, but just want you to have a good introduction to the team, what we're about, what we're trying to uh, accomplish in the South Sound. Hopefully you enjoyed hearing who we are, what we're trying to accomplish, what we're about. You know, one of our goals for this team is to be able to just talk about these topics, race and culture in our church and how they affect our church. You know, we all, we all bring, these, these aspects are part of our worldly identity. We have a kingdom identity as well. And we all bring a worldly identity into the kingdom and that, that's okay. Like we're, we're human, we have a background, we have um, cultures and upbringings and different life experiences. We have uh, very real differences that um, really make what we have in the kingdom special. <clears throat> but the important thing is that our kingdom identity in Christ, you know, when we said, 
Jesus is Lord. We, we pledged our allegiance to a, a, a new kingdom, a, a spiritual kingdom. It's different than the earthly kingdom. And the important thing is that our priorities are aligned with that as the most important allegiance. You know, we just had an election. And as I'm filming this, I don't know yet who, who won or lost. And there will be people who are upset on, on either on, on one side or the other, depending on how it went. And, but at the end of the day, Jesus is still Lord. And this is still his kingdom that he established. And when we said Jesus is Lord, we pledged our allegiance to that kingdom. And so within that light, we want we want to be able to talk about some of these difficult topics, race and culture in the church. And even just from the perspective of life experience, you know, I think um, like many things, uh, they become politicized. And when they become politicized, we can become triggered, especially if uh, we're more grounded in our worldly identity than in our kingdom identity. Um, and that's important to untangle, I think, to, 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 to be able to listen to um, you know, our brothers and sisters who, who have been negatively impacted in their lives on issues of, of race and culture, um, to be able to have empathy and, and help them heal, process, uh, even just express. It's important to lay aside some of our worldly allegiances to politics that have certain stances about these topics that are, um, are, are very opinionated, but don't always apply. You know, um, what we want to be able to talk about are those life experiences uh, in a way that's, that's helpful without triggering um, those worldly allegiances. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse eight. So we cared for you because we loved you so much. We were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. We have God's word, we have the gospel, but our lives are meant in his kingdom to be lived together, to be shared. And it's difficult to have complete unity when there are aspects of our lives uh, that we just can't talk about. They're taboo because we're maybe too aligned politically on those topics. Peter chapter one, verse 22, it says, now that you've been purified, now that you have purified yourself by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love, love one another deeply from the heart. We're not after the surfacey unity or surfacy love. We want to love one another deeply and be deeply connected to one another's all aspects of one another's lives, including maybe the pain, the joy, and everything in between. We think that our, our church culture uh, would be uh, so much more healthy if we could just communicate openly on these topics. And so we're asking you to go on this journey with us. We're gonna come up with new language on how to talk about these things. We're gonna come up with new models of how to think about these topics that bring unity. We're gonna look at God's word. We're gonna pray. We're gonna do a lot of pray. Hopefully you're praying uh, a lot for this country, its leaders, and, and for our church to have unity in, in what is an incredibly divisive time, really divisive. One of the best paths to unity is found in embracing that kingdom identity, being in God's word, praying, fellowship. You know, if you're looking for something you can do to support our team right now, you're looking for, okay, how can I get involved? How can I help? One of the best things I can recommend to you is, is, is buy this book and read it, you know, um, when I picked it up, I expected it to be a um, a more like opinionated, uh, almost more taking one side or another sort of politi politically influenced book. I, I just sort of expected that because 
that's how most material on this topic is is it's slanted one way or the other. And uh, <clears throat> I was I was pleasantly surprised that it, this is like a it's like ninety percent a, a study on the Bible study on the kingdom of God and that identity and how that how the way the world thinks and the wisdom of the world just doesn't apply to the kingdom of God and you know when we think about getting to a place of unity getting to a place where we can openly communicate and talk about these difficult topics that you know are, are part of the experience and life makeup of many of our members we need we need God's wisdom we need kingdom identities to uh, to be at the, uh, at the at the forefront of our minds when we talk about these things and so that's what we're striving towards we are just getting started you're gonna hear from us uh, many more times <clears throat> and God willing we can achieve uh, 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 another level of unity in our fellowship um, that will be a light to the world so as we wrap up again just ask that you pray for our church pray for um, for our group that's putting a lot of time into um, trying to figure this out trying to hash this out you know I should mention even though we're meeting two hours a week on these topics um, there are many more hours that are going into the relationships the phone calls the what did you mean when you said uh, X, Y, and Z kind of conversations in between meetings. Um, there's a lot of work going into it. And I just ask that you pray, uh, pray for that work, uh, pray for our unity, <clears throat> pray for the unity of the body. And then again, pick up this book, give it a read. And at any point, feel free to chat with anyone on the diversity unity team or shoot us an email, a uh, text, um, you know, we're all very deeply connected throughout the body. Um, if you have a particular concern or um, just strong um, a thought, uh, feel free to reach out. We're trying to reach out as well to the rest of the body and, and make sure that the way we're approaching this is going to uh, be successful in, in achieving that unity. So thanks again for your time. Uh, God bless. Stay safe. Keep the faith. Wow, guys, thank you so much for this. This was incredibly uh, well done and well put together. Uh, again, I'm super grateful for all of the work that uh, our uh, diversity team has put into, not just this, I mean, what you see isn't, uh, isn't what they, the, the work that they've done. It is just, a, a, you know, it's the, the culmination of many, many long hours of work uh, that they have done to come to this place. And I appreciate that, you know, Kyle said, this is just the beginning, right? This is the starting place. And uh, so we really appreciate this update. I think it really helps us uh, to kind of know what's going on. I appreciate the, uh, the transparency uh, with which you guys are communicating with uh, the church right now. I think this is going to be extremely helpful. Uh, Kyle, that was really good, except you stole Landon's tagline. And I, I do want to make note of that. We all know that's Landon's tagline. <laughs> Be safe and keep the faith. But it, but other than that, bro, uh, really good. I do want to take just a minute and uh, open it up for uh, well a very brief minute for some questions, uh, and and we'll try to answer a few things. Um, the 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 team isn't ready to field. I think a lot of uh, questions outside the scope of the work they're currently doing right now. So if you have questions about kind of the scope of the diversity team what kinds of things they're doing right now, uh, then feel free to, to raise your hand in the uh, participants section and we'll answer a few questions uh, for you there. 
Uh, I did see a question from um, Steve. Uh, that's uh, Michael Burns. Um, oh, I think Casey already answered your question. There you go. It was asking who's the author of the book, Crossing the Line. <clears throat> Are there any other questions though that anybody might have uh, for the diversity team just regarding the scope of the work they're currently doing right now? If not, that's fine. Don't. Oh, hello. Yeah, uh, yeah, if you could raise your hand in the participant section. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's all right. But we hear you now. Who is okay. this? Okay, Satira. Is this? Okay, go ahead, Satira. Um, yeah, so as far as scope, I was just wondering, like, what, um, and I know they can't probably like, talk about everything, but, like, what type of, like, um, either maybe, like, what is, like, the, the function, not just, I know the goals, but, like, are they going, is the diversity team going to have, like, activities or group discussions? Like, what kind of work are they going to be doing within the group, you know, um, past, like, I know they did the, now they kind of did like the going over the goals and what the mission of the group is. So what kind of like work are they going to be doing? Yeah. Well, let me, and let me jump in and answer that for you. I, I think one of the things I want to be really clear to everybody about is that the, the ultimate scope of this particular vision team, like all the other, the other three or other two vision teams is to provide recommendations for the staff so that we can make sure that we are helping the church to move forward in a healthy and positive and spiritual way as it relates to diversity and unity. So there'll be, now some of those recommendations might be activities uh, that they recommend. They might be people that come in and, and visit with us or books that they might recommend that we read together as a church, uh, special weeks or weekends or series. And that the, the, the scope of that could be broad. I don't think they've landed on exactly what activities yet, but ultimately their, their ultimate, uh, the ultimate scope is to bring whatever those ideas are back to us as a staff, so, not so that we can vet them so much, but so that we can know how to navigate and do a good job in, in our own leadership, helping our church to move forward in these issues. So I, I don't know if, I hope that answers your question, Satira. Yes, that, it does answer my question. Thank you. Yeah, great question. Any others? If not, um, listen, I think everyone is aware that we are still in the middle of an election. Uh, we are far from, I think, the end of it. it. It could be several days before we have all final counts. Again, I know that creates some, some anxiety for some. I know that a lot of us just kind of want it to be over. Uh, wherever you stand on it, at the end of the day, uh, Jesus is Lord, uh, really. And I think we all know that no matter who wins, uh, Jesus is Lord, and our ultimate allegiance is to him, to King Jesus. Uh, but I think it would be, we'd be remiss if we didn't take the time that we have tonight uh, for the remaining half hour or so and spend that time in some prayer together. Uh, we did have a prayer time uh, last week, and uh, certainly I don't, I don't think we can do too much praying together. We are uh, not only uh, uh, people standing in the need of prayer ourselves, but we are a country standing in the, in the need of prayer. And so I would really ask tonight that as we uh, break up into groups, land, uh, Landon's going to send us into some smaller groups for prayer. And if you'd like to stay on and pray, please feel free to do so. And uh, if not, uh, if you need to jump off, that's fine too. But I'd like you to be thinking about as you pray, be, let's, let's pray for both of these can, uh, candidates for president. There are two uh, candidates that are running for the office. Let's pray for both of them. We don't know who our ultimate, uh, the, the next leader of our country is going to be ultimately, but we certainly need to be praying for both of them. We need to be praying for our country. And, and certainly we need to pray for uh, us as a church. I, I really want to ask you to pray for us as a collective fellowship, that we are able to be a light uh, in the darkness during these really challenging times. You know, I I hope that uh, things will stay calm and that we will stay vigilant in prayer and that we will remain, uh, that we will be a people of peace, uh, that we will be peacemakers in the world, no matter what else is going on around us. And so let's make sure that we're praying for that, praying for our hearts to be firm and steadfast in Christ. All those are things that we can be praying for. And I'm sure you can come up with many other things as well, but that certainly can get us started. So 
Again, thank you to the uh, Unity and Diversity team, to Jimmy, uh, especially for putting that together. I wanna thank you, uh, Kyle, as well, just for your leadership uh, on the team as well, and for all of the members of the team. You guys are doing a fantastic job. We're super grateful to have all of you guys uh, in place there.